Hi, everyone. How are you? I hope you are well. Today, I would like to share with you some information that I have never seen before, which will probably be published with this video for the first time. Thanks to this information, it will be possible to get the maximum performance from the face eye detection system on Fujifilm X system cameras. If you're interested, let's get started. Before getting into our subject, I would like to make a brief reminder about the focusing systems in Fujifilm X system cameras. Our cameras basically have single autofocus, continuous autofocus, manual focus, face eye detection, subject detection systems. Subject detection systems are available on cameras such as X-T5, X-H2, and X-H2S, equipped with new generation processors and sensors. However, other focusing systems are found in almost all Fujifilm X system cameras. All these focusing systems vary according to the place of use and purpose, and they play a role in getting top-level performance from the camera. The audiences who reached me via social media were telling very different and even contradictory statements about the performance of the FACES eye detection system. There were those who criticized a lot and those who liked it a lot. While I was trying to think about what could be the reason for this, I realized that the settings we made affect the face eye detection performance. So I decided to do an experimental study. In this work, I completely put my camera in program mode, ignoring everything related to exposure. I aimed to get the highest performance possible by selecting the menu, Setup, Power Management, Performance, Boost option from the settings of the camera. I placed my model across and my X-T5 on the tripod. I used a 50 f2 lens. Again, I chose Menu. Auto focus, manual focus, face eye setting, face detection on, eye, auto. Since our subject is face eye detection and tracking, I chose the continuous auto focus AFC mode. Then I took the shots using single point zone and tracking as the auto focus mode, respectively. In these shots, I determined to what point the eye tracking of our model was followed to the right, left, above, and below the frame. I performed the right, left, up, down movement period with two repetitions to minimize possible errors. By reviewing these clips frame by frame, I marked the extreme points where the eye tracking indicator appears to the right, left, above, and below of the frame. By combining these four arrows, I have obtained a rectangle. So, for every situation, continuous autofocus single point, continuous autofocus zone, continuous autofocus tracking modes, rectangles were drawn with different colors. Under normal circumstances, I expected best performance in continuous autofocus mode. However, the continuous autofocus tracking mode, you see with orange color, gives the smallest tracking area. The continuous autofocus, single point mode, you see in green color, gives a larger tracking area. And finally, I found that the continuous autofocus zone mode, you see in purple color, gives the largest tracking area. In addition, almost a horizontal third of the frame was outside the tracking area. 
wondering what the situation is with the single autofocus. I perform the same cycle for the single autofocus. I have it again. Single autofocus single point. Single autofocus zone. Single autofocus wide tracking rectangles with different colors. I also brought the rectangles formed for single autofocus side by side. The single autofocus single point mode you see in red gives the smallest tracking area. The single autofocus zone mode you see in yellow gives a larger tracking area. And finally, I found that the single autofocus wide tracking mode you see with the cayenne color gives the largest tracking area. I have now combined all the rectangles on the same screen as a final comparison. This is where interesting information emerged. In this trial with the X-T5, I got the best performance with the cayenne colored single autofocus and the wide tracking autofocus mode. The worst performance was seen in orange colored continuous autofocus and wide tracking mode. After today, when taking photos, I guess that you will choose the single autofocus wide tracking mode when you will use the face eye detection system like me. What about when shooting video? I did the same experiment in video mode. As you know, in video mode, when the face eye detection system is active, no matter what you choose, continuous autofocus is activated. So there are two options we can try. One is area autofocus mode, and the other is multi autofocus mode. I make similar experiments in both and determine the follow up areas. When I superimpose these tracking fields, it sits one on one. The result is that we can choose area or multi autofocus modes while tracking face eye in the video because they have the same tracking field areas. However, I noticed a difference between the two. While tracking with area mode, the eye detection did not start immediately when the object went out of the active tracking area and then came back again. It started from a more delayed point. Whereas this is not the case when tracking with multi autofocus mode. When the object comes back after leaving the tracking area, the face eye tracking system immediately catches the eye and continues tracking. In this case, it seems more reliable to use multi autofocus mode. As a recap, choosing the single autofocus wide tracking mode when taking photos and the continuous autofocus multi mode when shooting videos provides the highest performance. Okay, my dear friends, I hope I shared useful information with you. Every kind of support you give to the channel, every comment, every like, every subscriber, every subscription you make with the join button, or every contribution you make with the special thanks button, for this video will be a motivation for different useful videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.